In this tutorial, I want to take you through a technique that I call depth building, or in its simplest terms, how to make your portraits pop. But first this. Hi folks, Glyn here. Just to remind you that if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button on my YouTube channel and also click the bell icon and tick in the notifications checkbox so that you'll never miss any of the live broadcasts. That's just a great and free way of showing you like the channel. Also, over on my website at glyndewis.com, click on the newsletter menu item to join my email group and download your free ebook called How to Develop Your Style. Fill in your email address, first name and family name and then click on the subscribe button. And finally, add me in and connect over on Instagram by finding me with the username at Glyndewis. Okay, so as photographers, retouchers and plain old human beings, we know that when we look at a picture, our eyes are naturally drawn to the areas that are the brightest, the sharpest and have the most contrast. So knowing that, if maybe we apply one or three of those particular things to a portrait, just like I did on this one here of uh, boxer Stephen Cook, it's going to give the pictures much more impact. It's actually going to give them much more depth, much more dimension, and especially when it's printed, it's going to make them appear as if they're coming forward from the screen or the print. Oh, wow. <laughs> So with that in mind, here's how I use it in my own portraits. All right, so here on screen, and this is a final retouch picture. It's from my World War II project. And you can see hopefully on your screen that the face here really does seem to sort of stand out, especially the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. The face really does come forward from the screen. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna show you pretty much the out of camera picture where all I've done on this one here is I've worked on the eyes just a little bit, brightened them up, and I've done a small amount of dodging and burning. If I just show you kind of uh, what we've got out of camera, you can see that there, you can see that I've brightened the eyes. There's videos that I've got on my channel. I'll put a little link in the description part so you can actually go to those techniques, but that's the eyes. And you can see here just a small amount of dodging and burning to shape the face. So what we're gonna be doing, if I just add a blank layer here, and I'll get a brush and we'll just change it to, let's say red, and I'll just take the opacity of the brush down to 50%, because what we're gonna do to make the face really stand out now, especially when it's printed, is I'm gonna first of all apply a kind of contrast over the entire face, not over the whole picture, just on this particular part of the face. Then I'm gonna do it again, but this time only targeting certain areas like the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So now we're gonna be really drawn in to looking at those particular areas. So the face with just that one layer is gonna to start to stand out, and then the eyes, you're gonna really draw into those when you actually start to add it onto there, the nose and the mouth. So here's how we're gonna do it. Let's just create a merged or a stamp layer to the top of the layer stack, you're holding the Shift, Control, Alt and E on PC. On Mac, you're looking at Shift, Command, Option and E, and I'll just rename this layer uh, Face. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to use a plugin. Now this is one called Topaz. Um, it's a great plugin called uh, Topaz Clarity. So I'm going to go filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Clarity. Now if you haven't got that, don't switch off. Because all I'm going to suggest you do here is use whatever technique that you like to use for adding contrast. Okay. There is a reason why I like to use Topaz Clarity and you'll see that in a minute. But generally any technique that you like will work for using on contrast. Now here we are then, we're in the actual uh, interface for Topaz Clarity. There is so much you can do within this particular plugin. You've got presets on the left hand side and you've got lots of sliders over on the right hand side. But despite all that, I only ever use the very two top sliders. We've got one called micro contrast and one called low contrast. So you can see just from those two sliders alone there, what this clarity plugin allows you to do is to get into all the fine detail and add contrast into those areas as opposed to kind of blasting the whole picture with contrast. This really does start to bring out detail. So all I'm gonna do then, my particular settings when I do this, I'm gonna take the micro contrast slider and take that all the way to around about 30-ish. Let's try and take it to 30, 
say 30 ish and then whatever I put the micro contrast to the low contrast I take to pretty much half so we'll go at the moment it's like 33 we'll take this to around about 16 17 something like that now if I bring my cursor into the picture area here if I press down you see the before and you see the after hopefully when it pops in but all I'm going to do now then I'm going to come over to the bottom right hand corner click OK to process this you'll see a little progress bar at the bottom here as the Topaz processes that those particular settings and it will then send it back over into Photoshop. So here we are then now in Photoshop and you can see that if I just turn that layer on and off, the actual contrast as you'd expect has been applied to the whole picture. But just like I showed you with that red kind of overlay, I only really want it to be on the face. So first of all, then I'm gonna hide the effect and I'm gonna add a layer mask. Now I'm gonna add a black layer mask because black will hide it. And to do that quickly, all I'm gonna do is hold down the Alt key on PC, Option key on Mac, come down to the bottom of the layers panel and then click on the layer mask icon. And you'll see now that adds a black layer mask. So black conceals, white reveals. So now then I'm gonna get a brush, change the foreground color to white, make sure the opacity is up at 100%, and let's just make sure there's no crazy kind of settings in there. Let's just turn that off. And a nice soft brush, let's bring the hardness right down to zero. And then all I'm gonna do is just paint in that particular effect of that topaz clarity on all of the face, like so something like that so only around the face and again we turn that on and off you can see now already we're starting to get some improvement and your eyes are really being drawn in to the face as opposed to anywhere else in the picture okay so the next stage then I'm going to create another merge or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack so shift control alt and e on pc and like I said before shift command option and e if you're using a mac and we'll just rename this one to we're going to go for eyes nose mouth e n m eyes nose and mouth so again we'll go to the filter menu i'm going to dive back in to use topaz clarity you would obviously now dive in and use your own particular technique that you like for using uh, to create contrast great thing is when i dive back into clarity it actually remembers the settings that I used before. And you can see over in the right hand corner here, we've got 33 on the micro contrast, 16 on the low contrast. Generally, though, I like to be around 30, 15, something like that. So again, we'll click OK. It'll apply that. Again, you can see the progress bar. It'll apply it to the whole of the picture. And then once it's back in Photoshop, again, now I'm going to add a black layer mask to hide the effect of that extra bit of clarity, get my brush, white foreground color, then all I'm gonna do is paint over one eye, paint over the other eye, put a little stroke down the nose, and then just a little bit over the mouth as well. Now let me just zoom in, I'm gonna double click on the hand tool to bring it in just a little bit closer. Let's just put these two into a group. So the top layer is selected, hold down the shift key, click on the one below, so they're both now selected, and I'll come to the fly out menu at the top right hand corner of the layers panel, and we'll put new group from layers, and we'll put a uh, contrast like so. And now you can see when we turn it off and on, off and on, the impact that has really does start to stand out on my screen now. I really hope this is coming through on your screen, but your eyes are really drawn to it as opposed to anywhere else in the picture. And believe me, you get this printed, especially on metal, it looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there you go, just a really, really quick technique, but incredibly effective, especially when you go and get these printed. So I highly recommend you give it a go. And if you do give it a go, just tag me in it on social media or even just drop me an email. All the details that you need, links to all the other little techniques I kind of mentioned at the start there with the eyes and the dodging and burning, those are in the description part. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.